Hi everyone, it's Abby with The Bead Place and beadplace.net and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a fun set of stackable tile bracelets using Tila beads and stretchy cord. Before we get started, I'd just like to remind you to please give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps our channel out. Make sure to leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also click the bell icon to turn notifications on so you get notified every time I post a new tutorial like this. Also, feel free to check out our Patreon link down below. Let's take a look at the materials. The materials we're using today are two different colors of Tila beads. We're also going to use one accent color of a quarter Tila bead. We are using two bead stoppers, some 0.5 millimeter stretch magic. The larger sizes do fit through, but in order to make knots small enough to hide inside the tilas, we're gonna be using the 0.5. We're also gonna use a big eye beading needle and then some glue. You can use E6000, you can use um, any type of jewelry, super glue or beading glue that's not gonna dry rot the elastic. Let's talk beads. The beads that we're using are Tila beads. They are a certain kind of tile bead. Tilas are a Japanese seed bead. They are a little bit more square and uniform than the other types of beads like the Czech tiles. The Czech tiles are a little bit more puffy and these are more square and um, they have sharper corners which works best for this project. So the two kind of bigger beads that we're using are regular Tila's and the little ones here are quarter Tila's and they are just that. They are a quarter of the size of a Tila. Now both of these beads have two holes and we're going to be utilizing them both. So we're using these um, to create a double strand bracelet but it'll kind of only look like one strand. The first thing that we're going to do is cut two lengths of our 0.5 millimeter stretch magic. So you can use a scissors or a knot cutter or a wire cutter for this. It just needs to be long enough to go around your wrist and then tie a knot. So for me that's about a foot and just cut two lengths that are equal. We'll set one of those pieces aside and then on one of them we will use a bead stopper. So we're going to squeeze the ears of the bead stopper like this in order to open it and we're going to close it on the end of our stringing material. On the other end what we're going to do is take our big eye beading needle. These needles are awesome. You can find them at beadplace.net. We're just going to open the hole which is the whole middle and we're going to string right down about an inch on our stringing material. Now we might end up if we pull too hard we might end up kind of tearing through our elastic um, but you want to make sure not to go down too far into your elastic uh, with your needle because we don't want to lose too much if it does end up tearing our elastic. So just kind of pull it down gently to almost set it in place. Then what we're gonna do is just work with one side or one strand at a time. And we're gonna start with our design. So I like to kind of um, use my colorful Tila, almost like a jewel, and I cap each side of it with, let's say a metal prong or something like that. That just helps me kind of figure my design. And then I'm gonna put a couple of the black ones in between. Um, each side. Sometimes I do two of the metal ones, but what you want to do is make sure that you're stringing one side first. Make sure you like it, make sure it's the right fit, and then you can go in and start stringing with the other side. So I'm going to take my needle and it's going to help me string through one of the sides of the Tila's. So I'm going to just string through. Now this is possible to do without a needle, but the needle just really helps. The first couple that go on might be a little tight, so you'll just kind of give them a gentle pull, um, but once the first couple go on and that elastic starts to kind of form to the whole size, it'll be a lot easier to string the rest of them on. So you can kind of start stringing, play with your design a little bit. I'm going to continue with a design like this, and I'm going to get more strung and I'll come back to show you some different design options. 
So you can see I have some different designs here. On the middle one, you can see I've got two of the black ones and in between each of those two sections of two black ones, I have a quarter tila and a turquoise tila and then another quarter tila. So that's kind of like the basic design. And then on this one, on the end here, I have kind of a similar design, but every other section of turquoise tilas, I have two quarter tilas and then um, two standard turquoise tilas. And then on this outer one, you can see I've got sections of three tilas going all the way around with my quarter tilas doubled and then I've got a single tila every now and then. So you can really get creative with it. And I think they look the best when you really kind of vary the design, especially when you're stacking them. And then you can see when you really change the color of the tilas, you can get a completely different look. So these, they almost look like a beachy set of bracelets with the pearlized tilas and the seafoam green. And then you can see that in the center one here, I've also added my quarter tilas in between my base color as well. So you can get really creative and come up with really unique designs and you'll always end up with a really beautiful statement set of bracelets. So I'm gonna keep going in this same basic design until I have reached a length that's long enough to fit nice and snug around my wrist. Now remember, this is a stretchy bracelet and we're gonna be doing a stack of these. So it's okay if these fit a little bit tight. They're nice and lightweight and comfortable. So I like to wear a tighter fit rather than a looser fit for these. Okay, so I have come to a length that will work for my wrist. And for me, I have just under a six inch wrist. So that gives me 27 of the larger Tila beads and 18 of the quarter Tila's. But of course, if your design's different than mine, your numbers are gonna be different. So if you're using more quarter Tila's than me, of course, you'll have a different number than what I have, but that'll just kind of give you a basis to start with for sizing if you've got a wrist size that's about the same as mine. So I have my length that I'm happy with, like I said, and now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take my needle off of the one end and I'm gonna put a bead stopper kind of close to the end where my needle was. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of length in here um, to work with. So I'll have a bead stopper on both ends. And then I'm going to thread my other piece of cord that we set to the side earlier. All right, so I'm gonna take the needle off of the one side here and I'm going to put my bead stopper on a little bit underneath where my needle was just to give myself a little bit of room here. I'm going to grab my other piece of stretch cord that I set to the side earlier and I am going to actually string that into the original bead stopper that we started with. So I'm going to open it slightly, still leaving that piece of elastic in that we started with and I'm going to thread my second piece of elastic in. Now, we wanna make sure that they're a couple spaces apart. Usually I like to go about three to four spaces apart. Three is prob probably the best, um, but three to four is okay. Then what we're gonna do is thread that empty piece of elastic just the same way we did before with the needle. So we can go ahead and use that same needle and open it up. I like to use my fingernails, if you don't have fingernails, you can use another needle or the card that it came on. And remember, just string about an inch down because as we work with these needles, um, if we're a little bit rough with it or if there's a Tila that has a little bit of a tight hole, what can happen is this needle can eventually start to um, tear through or shred through this elastic cord. And if we lose that last inch, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if our needle was way down here, it wouldn't give us enough ends to tie with. So um, if your stretch cord does break, like I said, no big deal. We can just move the needle down a little bit further and we've got plenty to work with. So now what we're gonna do, we're not gonna be threading any more beads onto our work. We're just gonna be working with these beads that are already strung. So you're just going to take this needle and string through the empty hole. Now what I like to do is just go through a couple of beads at a time. So I like to hold them in my hand like this and pull it through. 
And remember, they're gonna go on tight the first couple of times because this is a new piece of elastic. So we're just gonna work all the way to the other side of the bracelet. And you'll kind of get the hang of it and it'll go faster, especially if you don't have a tripod and a camera sitting in front of you, separating you from your hands and seeing what you're doing. <laughs> but like I said, these are really quick and easy bracelets and they're super impressive. These Tila beads just are kind of um, calling for projects like this. I really love working with simple projects with these Tila beads because they're just so cool on their own, just the tile. Okay, so you can see here that I have strung through all of these beads. And of course you're gonna notice that I finished my pattern in a way that when they join, my pattern will continue in pattern so that's important as well but you can see i've got one bead stopper on one of the sides here and then my needle still attached on the side that just came through the beads and then on the other side i still have uh, the bead stopper on both of my strings so what i'm going to do now is take my bead stopper off of the string that has the needle on it and then i'm going to show you how to tie it into a finished bracelet. Okay, so I'm gonna take my needle off of the one side of my elastic and I'm going to take my bead stopper off of just that same side. You wanna make sure that it is the same side because it's disastrous if it's not. So we should double check, make sure that we're working with the same side and we're gonna make sure that our uh, bead stoppers are also on the same side. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and tie a square knot. So a square knot is where we take the right side of the thread and we go over and under the left thread. So it should look like this. We're gonna tighten that. And we wanna tighten it pretty tight. Make sure that our bead stoppers aren't twisted inside of our bracelet. And then we're gonna do the same thing over again. So we're gonna take that right thread, but this time it's on the left side. It's still our right thread though. We're gonna go over and under the other thread. And that is our square knot. So right over left and then left over right. So I like to do this again, right over left and under and left over right. So it's that same thread each time, but it switches sides. So once I've tied two threads on there, or I'm sorry, two knots, I'm going to go ahead and take my bead stoppers off the other sides of the thread. And I'm gonna set those aside. Now what I'm gonna do is untwist my bracelet, make sure everything is nice and uniform, Make sure that when I go to tie, tie these that nothing's twisted. Um, and I'm going to, what I like to do is make sure that my other threads are out of the way so they're not gonna get tangled in my knot. Just so you guys can see it a little bit easier, I'm not going to put my bead stopper here. Um, but if I was doing this um, not on camera and I wasn't worried about you guys seeing what I was doing. Sometimes what I like to do is just put my bead stopper here on these other threads just so that they're out of the way and kind of hanging down. So our one last step is to make sure we don't have any mistakes or twists anywhere. And then we'll go ahead and repeat that knot and make sure that we have a untwisted bracelet when we tie that knot. All right, you can see here that I have untwisted my bracelet and that just means that it is a complete smooth circle that will fit flat on my wrist when I wear it. And now what's left is to tie my second set of square knots. So again, I'm going to tie right over left underneath and I'm gonna tighten it. Now this time what we're gonna try to do is match the tension of our first elastic going through. Now, if this is a little bit too tricky to deal with this at this point in your jewelry making career, um, don't worry about it. It's gonna be a beautiful bracelet no matter what. But um, if you are particular and if you can try to match that tension, this is the time to do it. So, looks like I got it pretty well uniform. 
good deal. So now what I'm gonna do is continue with another set of square knots. I'm gonna make sure that I'm holding the right sets of ends and I'm gonna go ahead and tie another square knot. So again, that's right over left and through and tighten and left over right and through and tighten. So here is where it gets fun. What we're gonna do is apply a little bit of glue on these knots. All right, so our next step is we are going to apply a little bit of glue to these knots. Now, a lot of people don't like to glue their elastic and that's fine. However, I just kind of figure, why not? Um, we are going to be super precise with our glue application and not messy at all. So let's go ahead and do it. It'll hold it a lot more securely and it'll also hold those knots inside the bead. So a lot of times, I'm sure you've had a stretch bracelet where when you take it on and off, that knot just likes to pop out and show. Well, if you glue your knots on your elastic bracelets and tuck the knot inside of a bead, it's gonna glue that knot inside of the bead. So <laughs> it's not gonna pop out whenever we uh, go to wear it. So what I'm gonna do is use a little scrap piece of wire here. You can use a toothpick, you can use your needle and we are going to just get the smallest amount of glue. Well, that's a little bit more than the smallest amount of glue, isn't it? We're gonna get, okay, we're gonna get a little bit more than the smallest amount of glue, and we are going to make sure to put the cap back on your E6000 immediately. Then what we're gonna do is open this up. I like to stretch my beads out a little bit so that I can get into where the knots are. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue right to those knots. Just the smallest bit of glue will do. And here we go. Um, if I was at the shop right now, I would be using specialty glue. That's my preference, but E6000 works just as well. Of course, we are filming from home right now. And now what we're gonna do is tuck these knots inside the Tila bead. Before I do that, I'm gonna trim the ends short, get them out of the way. So now that I have trimmed those ends, what I'm going to do is kind of just tuck the knots into the Tila. Now, matte beads are gonna be a little bit trickier to tuck those knots into, but I have faith in you, you can do it. Oh, I pulled that one a little too far. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull that back in and then I'm gonna work on the top one. Just pull it right in. Anything more than, let's say, two sets of those square knots might not fit into the Tila's, um, but even one set if you're gluing is gonna be A-OK. -okay. So there we go. We have a beautiful, finished, stretchy tile bracelet. Thanks so much everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps our channel out. If you have any questions or if you'd just like to say hi, you can leave a comment down below. I do my best to respond to all of the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and make sure to turn that bell icon on if you'd like to receive notifications for when we post new videos. Also, make sure to check us out on social media like Facebook and Instagram. We'll have our accounts linked down below. All the materials that we used today can be found at beadplace.net. The kit will also be linked down below. And if you'd like to support us even further, you can check out our Patreon, which is a monthly subscription that you can join. You get access to our monthly Facebook page. There's lots of different perks that you can, you can take advantage of. Um, and in our Facebook page, there's sneak peeks of upcoming videos and quarterly giveaways and all kinds of fun stuff. So thanks so much again for watching this video and have a great day.